apologize to the choir. When the men's club decided we were going to do a service on Father's Day, I thought it would be great to do the Lord's Prayer. Oh, oh, what have we been through the last four weeks? This is without a doubt the toughest anthem we've ever done in the history of Central United Church. The timing goes from three fourths to twelve eighths and back and half notes and covers and caps and everything on the notes. But guess what? We pull it out. Yes, we did.
Jesus delivered and taught during his short lifetime. So let's take a look at how this Father thing is working out for us. In 1910, over 90% of families actually had married parents. Moving forward, that dropped to 80% in 1950 to 65% in 1980, and it's down to 45% 40, in 2010. This is the family I'm talking about, where the parents are actually married. So what does that mean to us? The nuclear family that we all know and love seems to be breaking down. Yes, there are still fathers in the equation, but many of them are absentee fathers, not directly involved with the raising of their children. A staggering statistic comes out of Chicago, where 71% of the children in that city have no father anywhere in the picture. 71%. Those poor children are starting off life with one arm tied behind their back. I'm not sure what we can do about it, but there are some suggestions I'm going to have later on. There's an old joke, what is mass confusion? Father's Day in Harlem. Unfortunately and sadly, that phenomenon is slowly working its way across the border. Marriage commitments seem to have eroded. Marriage doesn't seem to be the thing to do with the youth of today. I miss it, I know a lot of people else miss it too. There's an interesting story in this month's United Church Observer. I'm sure most of you get the Observer. The story is written by a female United Church minister who's going through a divorce. And the man she is divorcing is also a United Church minister. Now this has got to create some awkward situations in the, both of their churches, questions being asked, because we rely under normal conditions on our pastor, on our minister, to guide us in life. If there's marital problems, we go to the minister, ask for help. So you can imagine the reaction when both United Church ministers got divorced from each other. Going back to the Ten Commandments, there are things that we were <laughs> told that were to guide us in our life's journey. Moses came down off Mount Sinai with the tablets telling us these are the things we were to do. A Sunday school teacher was discussing the Ten Commandments with her group of five and six year olds. After explaining the very commandment to honor your father and your mother, the teacher asked, is there a commandment that tells us how to treat our brothers and sisters? Without missing a beat, little Johnny answered, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, how does all this bode for children going forward without parental direction? both father and mother. I don't know the answer. If there's no father present, that makes it hard to obey that half of that commandment, honor your father and your mother. So what can we as practicing Christians do? As Jesus taught us so many years ago, we are to lead by example. I look around this room here this morning, I see marriages that have lasted, in many cases, way more than half a century. Half a century. Ray Scratch just celebrated his 91st birthday this morning. Been married, what, 66 years, Ray, or 67? Coming up 70. Coming up 70. I guess I missed a couple in there. Sorry about that. Yeah. There you go. 69 years married. Is that going to happen with today's young people? I hope so. I really and truly do hope so. Let's take a look around this 
sanctuary about things that families have done in the past that will benefit us in the future. Last week I brought Mary Lou Hill up here and showed her the plaque that her mother and father had up here on the altar. The little brass plaque there is from Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence Flint, Mary Lou's mother and father, in memory of their parents, Mr. and Mrs. Elmer Flint and Mr. and Mrs. Frank Barrett. It was presented in 1959 when they donated that stained glass window for the renovations that we did at the front of the church. Okay? That's 56 years ago. Wonderful ladies. Going further, in the back, one day a couple of years ago I was looking at a plaque back there and you could barely read it. So anyway, I took it off the wall, took it up to Al Jill, and I said, how do we fix this up? Al told me how to do it, so now we can read it. And it's uh, a plaque for Mr. and Mrs. G.P. Smith. They used to live at 145 Wellington Street. They were the parents of uh, Dallas J., who married Harvey J., and they were the, Dallas and Harvey were the parents of Lauren J., and Carol J., Carol Miller attended this church, Lauren J. attended this church. They donated the chimes that we're going to hear after the service today. Okay? That was in 1960. The big window there, donated by the railroad people. There's a plaque there underneath the window that I, I found downstairs and put up a couple of years ago. Leroy and Mildred Joff, parents of Sally Buck and Rick Joff, they paid for the restoration of that big window back in 1994. Family legacy, wonderful thing for the church. Oh, the third pew back here, on the back of the third pew, there's a plaque. And it's honoring the Reverend John and Jenny Hunter for sitting there for 20 years. And it was donated by their son, the Reverend Ernest Crosby Hunter. I'll have to get John Brown to explain to me somewhere how the Crosby's and the Hunters got together. But there's a cornerstone on the front of the church, if you've ever noticed it, just above the big window there. And it's called the, Cros the Hunter and Crosby Methodist Church in 1897. Now well, there's a legacy. There's a road out near Belmont called Crosby Hunter Road. I believe there's a Crosby Hunter Church out that way somewhere too. These are legacies from fathers and mothers and families. We can only hope that this will continue into the future with the next generations coming forward. So as a Christian con congregation, Going forward, we must do our best, best to strengthen and promote the family group. And we must follow the example of Jesus and lead by example. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious morning. We thank you for all the fathers, both here and deceased, and we honor all of them. In Christ's name. We'll now sing Faith of Our Fathers, number 580, I believe it's 560.